Welcome to Haxby Shed. What have we got here then? I'm making a draw bar for 5C collets. I bought a piece of tube. It's a little bit too large, so I'm just machining it down slightly. That's the external diameter of the draw bar sized. The spindle bar is one and three eighths. So I bought one and three eighths tube, thick wall tube, and I just needed to machine on a bit of relief. So let's look at where we are with the project so far. I've got the draw bar, which I need to thread to take this. Now, not specifically this. I don't have any 5C collets. I'm making the draw bar so that if I do find some cheap 5C collets, I might buy them. So this is an ER32 to 5C, but it just gives me the thread. So I'll use this as my 5C collet. And then I need a spindle nose bush. And I looked on eBay and I saw how much they cost. Far too much for this. So I made one. And uh, it's only soft mild steel. But it won't get a lot of use. There we go. So, on to the thread. So if I'm going to cut 20 TPI thread, I need to set up my lathe to cut imperial threads. So that's currently set up for metric. I need to change the wheels to 50, 63, 40, 120. These are the important ones, 40 and 63. I'll set that up and come back. This first set this gear to mesh with this gear and then adjust the banjo plate. Now they're set up. 50, 63, 40, 120. According to my charts for 20 TPI, all three of these levers need to be over to the right and this gear setting needs to be on the sixth hole along. So the next thing I need to do is set up a test piece and check that it is 20 TPI and I've got that right. Right, we'll do a scratch on this and see if we've got 20 TPI. And yes indeed, it is 20 TPI. Next I want to check the internal diameter of this tube. I make it 29.63. So looking at some dimensions, my draw bar is 29.63 millimeters internal. My 20 TPI thread maximum is 31.44. And for a length of 16.76 millimeters, I'm going to have to machine a relief ring here inside so that when I come to the end of my thread cutting and I stop the machine, that the tool can sit within that relief ring in there. So, how deep do I make that? Well, I need to make it. 31.44 minus 29.63 total of 1.81 millimeters divide that by two so I need to cut in 0.9 millimeters into this inner face here set back at least 16.76 millimeters inside the tube so actually I'm going to cut that as one millimeter I've machined the relief about six millimetres wide and one millimetre deep. I've also fitted a 60 degree screw cutting carbide tip. I've checked that the tool is square to the work. I 
think most people probably know, because I'm cutting an imperial thread on a metric lathe, I have to be careful not to disengage the half nut. If I do, I'll never get back to my position. So what I've got to do is to put my cut on, run the lathe forward, stop, back off the cut, reverse the tool out, apply my cut, run the lathe forward and keep doing that sequence, making sure never to take out the half nut drive. It's nearly in but not quite. Goes in at half a turn. This inner surface has got pushed up, sort of formed upwards. It's making it very tight on the thread. So I need to relieve this, these upper crests. So with the thread cut in the drawbar, let's see where we've got to with the project. I was watching YouTube last night and a machinist had a problem with play in his headstock bearings and I thought to myself, no, I've never tested those. So I'm just going to repeat the test that he did. He had 20 thou of lift when he put a pry bar, crowbar, underneath his chuck. So let's see what we've got. Can't believe I never tested this before, but anyway. It looks okay, let me just zoom in to the clock. I think that's okay. Certainly not bad enough for me to try and adjust things. Best leave alone. Now having proved that this is running absolutely true, at least on this outside face here. Yeah, rubbish isn't it? So I need to remachine that. Ah, go back to school. <laughs> I need to make the peg that goes into this slot. So I've been working on that. That's probably far too tiny for you to see. I'll bring it nearer and maybe it'll focus. It usually doesn't. There we go, you can see it now. And now I need to put the two flats on it, which I'm going to attempt to do in the shaper. Wish me luck with this. The part of this peg that engages in the slot on the collet chuck is only an eighth wide or 3.2 millimetres. So first to touch off, which I'll do by lifting the table because I've set the down feed to a zero point. That's just touched now. I've just put on 0.2 of a mil, that's all. Last cut on this side. It's all getting a bit tight. One side done. Nearly finished machining side two. I think that's the last cut. Could I get any closer to the vise than that? It's come out slightly narrower than I wanted. More like three millimetres than 3.2. Oops. But I think it'll do the job. The peg is in the bush. It's quite difficult to work at that scale. Hopefully you can see that. So this is clocking the front next to the chuck. It jumps as it goes over the keyway, but otherwise that's spot on. This is out by about a thou, but I don't know how I can get it any better than that. Now I'm set up, ready to machine. What's going on here then? Before I started this, I clocked up the top slide angle to the internal taper on the spindle nose. But when I then clocked it against the taper on here, it's a couple of thou difference. So which one's right? It's quite difficult to clock from inside the spindle nose. And to check the angle of the top slide, 
I'm going to use this standard bar, which has a Morse Taper 3 on the end of it. I'm going to use the spindle bush and set that up between centres, where this is at the tailstock end, and I'll clock off this back edge of this taper. It's much easier to get to this than it is trying to clock inside the spindle nose. Now you might say the three jaw is going to have a bit of run out and it does have a few thou run out. But over this distance, this being out by a few thou from centre isn't going to make any difference really to clocking the back of this because I know this tailstock is aligned correctly because I don't get a taper when I'm turning. So let's clock off the back of here now. Fail. <laughs> okay, let's get that set up again. I think it's good enough now. Yes. I've recut the taper. This is as good as I can do now. I'm going to polish the taper next. I used this old parting tool so I could clear the chuck on one side and work up to the collar on the other side on the right. A little bit less than a thou I think. I'm just going to finish by taking a fraction more off the back edge of this collar. Okay that's better, that's with the bush tapped in and firmly snugged down and with the feeler gauge 0.15 millimetres. With the spindle nose cover on the bush looks pretty smart. 0.15 millimetres is six thou if you prefer imperial. I must feature this picture produced by my granddaughter Emily and she wanted me to include it. I think the real hero of this has been the multi-fix tool post because you can see just how versatile it is. I hope that's been useful to you. Thank you for watching Hacksby Shed.